Hey everyone, today we're doing a natural light portrait photo shoot on the Sigma 35mm f1.2 and the Sony a7 III. I'll be giving you guys some of my first impressions and thoughts of this lens with lots of photo examples. So I was thinking maybe we can start up here on like one of the steps. Sitting? Uh, I think standing, so I want to try and get like just that in the background. Uh, no, I think up one actually. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty! We don't have a lot of space to work with, so we're going to make it work. <laughs> So here I'm getting a bit of a wider shot. I'm kind of cropping around here. So, and feel free to move around just kind of as much as you want. Yeah, that's pretty. Oh, you've already got like petals in your hair. It looks really nice. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've never done a proper photo shoot with cherry blossoms before, so I was really happy to be taking these photos. Dan and I went on a location scout a couple of days before the shoot, and I found this perfect spot with two really beautiful trees. The only issue is that the trees were right next to someone's front door, so I had to knock on a stranger's door and ask for permission to shoot there. If you wanted to try, maybe you could lean your elbows just up there. I know that's something you guys ask about all the time and yes, when we are shooting in close proximity to someone's house, I always like to ask for permission as I don't want to make anyone upset or like trespass on property. Luckily the lady who answered the door was super nice and was excited for us to shoot there so we came back a few days later with a model for this photo shoot. Oh my god, I'm at 1.4. <laughs> we need to be at 1.2. <laughs> I want to see what this lens can do. Yeah, I'm going to try and get like, quite close up to you now. I thought having a 35mm focal length worked out perfectly for this shoot. In order to be able to shoot backlit with the cherry blossoms, we had to be standing on the stairs to the doorway, so there wasn't a lot of room to be able to move around and create distance from the model. The 35 was a really good focal length to be able to get a variety of shots in such a constricted space. And even though it's not the best focal length for close-up portraits, I personally really love that distorted look. So this one I'm getting more of your legs in it as okay. well. So moving on to the actual lens, my first impressions while shooting with it is that the autofocus speed is pretty slow compared to what I'm used to. Sarah was really great with moving around and creating some different angles and facial expressions, but I wasn't able to shoot as many photos as I wanted as the autofocus just wasn't there at all times like I'm used to with my Zeiss or G Master lenses for Sony. Sometimes she would be moving around and would hear that I'm not shooting, so she would kind of pause her movement so I could get the shot and I feel like that really breaks up the flow of a photo shoot. Okay, and then I want to get in, I want to try and get like one super duper close up. And then a uh, couple of landscapes too. This lens is so heavy. Yeah. You can like feel it in my arm. Arms start to shake. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I hope I'm getting some of the falling yeah. petals. <laughs> Lady comes out, she's like, can you please leave? <laughs> oh my gosh, you're the best. <laughs> Alright, let me get like a wide shot so we can definitely get that in. I don't know where I am. You can get in like closer. Yeah? Yeah, there. Try that. Oh, that's so cool. Do you want to try actually from up here? Alright, let's do it. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's so cute, I love it. <laughs> Can I get you to stand just here so you're kind of yeah. like... I'm still pretty bright. <laughs> I'm 
like the sun literally just popped out. Yeah, it was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we can just do like, if you kind of like have your head up, you can close your eyes. Okay. Yeah. We'll just do like a harsh lit shot. I don't want to get a wide angle with everything in here. Because of the slow autofocus, I was kind of expecting the worst when I went to cull my images, but I was actually quite surprised that although the autofocus speed was slow, the accuracy was really high. Most of my images from this photo shoot were in focus, right on the eyes, even while I was shooting at f1.2, and they are so sharp as well, as you can see from my unedited 100% crops that I'm sharing throughout. So yeah, I was really impressed by that and I'm so happy I had a lot of options to choose from for the portraits with the cherry blossoms. As you guys can see, I edited a lot of them. I'll just try one more. <laughs> I don't, like, don't want to leave. Yeah. <laughs> can I get one more of you standing just on the first step here? I'm going to try and get a little bit further away from these. Yeah, I'm going to try and use these as like some bucket in the shot. If you wanted to kind of like sway your arms around a little bit, like swing them around or... It's a bit of a whimsical shot. Yeah, beautiful. The lighting conditions we had on the day were not the best to be shooting wide open with. It was a bit cloudy and the glare from the sun through the clouds was really bright. So it causes some glare in the skin tones of portraits when shooting wide open. I ended up using my New York Lightroom preset pack, which by the way, I recently updated. So instead of a single preset, it's now a pack of presets. So it'd be nice if you like kind of had both your elbows leaning here but on this side. So I'll leave that link down below if you guys wanted to check that out. And I also did some dodging and burning in Photoshop to soften up those glary spots you might see in the before images just because of the weird lighting on the day. And then I was also thinking if we kind of stand on the street, we'll kind of get like a wider shot with the tree in the background yep. too. I think for this one, it might be cool if you wanted to do like a little bit of pacing kind of around on the spots, like side to side and lots of swinging arms. You can like look around and stuff as well. I'll follow you around. In saying that, I do like the color rendition straight out of the camera with this lens. Similar to the Sigma 35 millimeter art for EF mount, I found that the colors look very, very slightly desaturated, again, compared to the G Master and Zeiss lenses that I normally use. It really affect the way that I process my images. It's just something that I noticed while looking through my rolls. Could I also get you to sit just here on the curb side? Going for a bit of like a suburban kind of style shoot, I guess. Uh, oh, actually, I'll get a full body shot so I can get your shoes in there. So I want the pink in the background. I like that if you wanted to have one of your legs crossed, like that one just kind of laying. Yeah, like add a little bit more. Oh, this lens is actually so heavy. One of the last things I noticed about this lens that's a drawback for me is the weight. Holy moly, this is a really heavy lens, which for me personally makes it feel less fun to shoot with. So I feel like if it's in my camera bag, I don't think I would reach for it very often just for this reason. By the way, this video was filmed on the Sony a7S II and we also used the Fujinon 18 to 55 millimeter lens. So if you're wondering why it looks a little bit different, that's the gear that we're using to film today's video. Also, just another quick little plug. If you guys haven't tried it yet, I would love for you to download my free photo editing app, Digital Film. It's available on both Android and iOS. I'll leave a link for both of them in the description. So yeah, it would be awesome if you guys tried it out and maybe posted some photos with the hashtag Digital Film Actions, because I really love seeing what you guys create. So I want you to be kind of like surrounded by the green.
So my final thoughts are that if you are a wedding photographer or someone that shoots in a more fast paced environment, due to the slower autofocus of this lens and also the weight, I think there are better options for a 35mm focal length to go with where the gear won't hinder you from capturing moments on the fly. If you just do portrait photography or work in a slower paced environment or prefer to take your time a little bit more while shooting and you have the luxury to do that, then this lens is really beautiful if you don't mind the weight of it. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments as well. Do any of you guys own this lens and use it on a regular basis and what kind of photos do you take with it as well? Fake pace on the spotlight, just one back and forth kind of thing. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I have a playlist of all my photo shoot behind the scenes linked up here on the screen if you want to watch more. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single week and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.